Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with Heritage Pride Custom Firearms and today we are going to be building a uh, solar heat collection system and uh, we're going to be using this primarily as an experiment. Um, I'm not uh, real experienced in the, all the solar stuff and, and how it works so uh, I'm, I'm wanting to build something primarily to heat my gun shop and uh, so I'm going to build this solar uh, heat collection system um, using some leftover materials I had some from job so some from some job sites <coughs> as well as um, some stuff that I had to go buy uh, this one's going to be kind of small um, mainly just because I want to see how it works um, and then in the future it might be something that I use on a bigger scale to help offset the cost of uh, heating our house or uh, anything else for that matter. So um, the one that we're going to be building is going to be approximately 32 inches tall and uh, 6 feet wide. Uh, I'm actually, this is the south side of my house right now and it's kind of a cloudy day and I've got kind of a, I don't have an optimum um, area or layout for a solar heat collector. Um, the south side of my house, I would love for the south side to be the backyard because uh, I can do so much more in the backyard. I've got a lot more room. Out here on this side of the house, I don't really have a lot of room. Um, I've got about 12 feet from the house to the property line. And so that doesn't give me a lot of space to have cool stuff in this little area. And so what I'm going to be doing with mine is I'm going to kind of try to keep it kind of small and pack as much punch as possible. But I'm going to be mounting it up on the side of the house here. Right now, the, the sun is behind some clouds, so you can't see it. But the, uh, you know, everybody knows sunrise in the east uh, and sets in the west. So um, the sun cuts across, it's, it, that's its path of travel. Um, and so we're south facing right here, and the sun is, is shining right in my eyes, but through the clouds. So it, we do get some good southern exposure here. Uh, but unfortunately there's a house probably 30 feet, uh, the neighbor's house, 30 feet from where I'm standing right here. So because of the where the sun's horizon is or where the sun's travel is uh, during the winter months, it, it's kind of low. Um, it, it usually always hits. This morning, first thing this morning I got up and, and checked it out and it was hitting. Uh, the shadow was casting about right here. So I think as long as I keep my, my collector above this area here, mounted up high, we should be good to catch as much sun as, much sun as possible. Now in the, in the summer, there's a lot of trees right now that you can see, or you, you can't see them, but there's probably about eight trees right here in this area. There comes the sun through the clouds a little bit. Um, about eight trees in this area here. But during the summer, when the leaves are on it, we don't need it. All right, we're not going to need the heat. So uh, during the winter when all the leaves are gone, I think we'll be fine as long as we keep it up high. So I've done some research. I've been researching this uh, solar collector for um, a while now. Um, it's been on my mind to do it. Uh, I, I, you know, I showed you in one of the other episodes the wood heater that I have for in the garage. Um, but frankly, that's really expensive and I just don't have the money right now to install that wood stove in there to do it properly, you know, um, to use the Class A pipe and, and the, you know, all the, all that hardware that I need to install it properly, I just don't have, and I don't have an abundant source of free wood to burn. So I'm trying to figure out a way to heat my gun shop during the day uh, and hope that if we insulate it well enough that that heat, it'll retain some of that heat um, later on after the sun goes down. And uh, so anyway, like I said, I've been researching it for a while now. I've looked at a lot of different uh, scenarios and, and design plans. And uh, quite frankly, some of them don't make any sense and some of them are pretty good. And so I've, I've kind of brainstormed and thought, some, uh, thought of some stuff based on the knowledge that I have in construction. And um, that is what I'm going to base my, um, my build on is what knowledge I have in construction and uh, some of the things that would go uh, that would help with it. So anyway, um, the first thing I need to do is get me some uh, mounting boards up on the wall. I'm going to use some 2x4s uh, and run them horizontally 
uh, to mount everything to. So um, that's what I'll do first is go ahead and lay it out and cut and mount those and then we'll start building our box. All right guys, so I just finished putting the, uh, the last screw in our, uh, our rough frame box here. And uh, what I decided to do based on uh, <coughs> insulated value and, and uh, just stability kind of looking at both ends there. Originally I had thought I would mount these 2x4s right here directly to the house. And then I'd have one layer of OSB, a layer of styrofoam, and then another layer of OSB. But um, that would allow a lot of air movement back <coughs> between the back of the box. And since our pipes are going to be coming out of the back of the box into the house, I want to keep as much air movement as possible out from behind the back of the box. Um, and then that way that'll keep our, uh, our pipe warm coming back into the house and won't allow that brisk air to blow back behind there. So what I did was I just cut our, our basic outline of the um, what the size of the box was going to be. In this case, 32 by 72, or 32 inches by 6 feet. And I just tacked it to the side of the house. Went back and found where my studs were at on the inside. It was, it was pretty easy because I've still got exposed framing inside the garage. So it worked out pretty good that way. So I went back and I cut my 2 by 4 6 feet long. Put one at the top and one at the bottom. And then I ran some four inch timber lock lag bolts through the house into that stud. And so these two by fours are nice and solid to the house. This box is gonna weigh quite a bit, so we wanna make sure that it's secured properly. Then I went back and I cut my framework. And what I had, and you can do this at pretty much any angle that you want to. You can see right now there's no sun at all. It's really, really cloudy today. It looks like it might actually rain. So what I did was I went ahead and uh, I had a uh, 2x10, uh, scrap 2x10 laying over there. So I went ahead and I just cut the 2x10. I figured out how much room I needed for all my layers in the back plus my 4 inch tubing. And uh, it came out to about 8, about eight inches. It's actually a little bit less than that. It's about 7 and a half inches. But I gave a half inch there uh, just to play with to be on the safe side. So with that now I can go... Um, I cut from one end, I measured over on my 2 by 10 eight, 8 inches and made a tick mark and then I measured 32 inches long and drew my square line for my cut line and then I took a level and made an angle from 8 inches out to nothing to the true width of the 2 by 10 uh, which is about 9 and a quarter inches. So at the top I'm about 8 inches deep and at the bottom about 9 and a quarter inches deep that's not a lot of angle, but every little bit of angle to give you a little bit more angle to the sun will help heat your box up better. Um, I've seen, I watched some videos of a guy that, that built one, and uh, before he mounted it on his wall, he just built a square box, and before he mounted it, he had it kind of at an angle leaning against the uh, house, and uh, he got his temperature readings, and then later he hung it flat on the, on the actual side of the house, and he lost about 30 degrees uh, in his temperature in the box just by going from a little bit of an angle leaning against the house to no angle being flat against the house. So uh, any little bit of angle is going to help collect that sunlight and raise the, the temperature in your box. So I used the 2x10s on the ends. Uh, I had a leftover 2x10 inside. This one's untreated, but I ran out of, of treated lumber. And I'm trying to do this as cheap as possible, so I didn't want to go buy one. So I used an untreated 2x10 on the top and I followed the same angle up here and down here so that when we put our roof on here it'll, it'll lay true or our, our polycarbonate it'll lay true to the angle. And so I'm not worried too much about this because what I'm going to do is uh, get me a piece of flashing and uh, once I lay my polycarbonate and everything on here I'll cut me a piece of flashing and it'll be like a big drip edge and I'll make it to where it, it bends up in the back and I can tuck it up underneath my siding here and then over here in the front it'll come out and bend over so that way any rainwater will run off of the, uh, the end here and not run down between the polycarbonate or run back behind my box because I have exposed OSB back here. Uh, OSB likes to swell up when it gets wet so that'll keep the rain off the OSB and out of the inside of the box. 
And you shouldn't need anything down the sides that should naturally run away from it. If we just have a drip edge on top here just to keep the water from, from running down in it. So anyway, the box is framed in. Uh, like I said, use some good sturdy bolts. I like uh, Fasten, uh, Fasten Master has a, uh, a bolt called Timber Lock or Head Lock. And um, anyway, they work really good. Uh, you do need an impact driver to get them in. You're not going to get them in with a regular drill. But uh, they work really, really good. I use them to build decks. And uh, they are the only fastener that is uh, code approved to take the place of a uh, hurricane strap or hardware bracket or anything like that. So those will work fine for this. Uh, probably overkill, but it's good and solid. You could get in here and sleep if you wanted to. It's not going to go anywhere. So our next step now that we've got it rough framed is we want to add, I've got some styrofoam insulation boards that I bought for the greenhouse that I haven't used yet. And I'm going to cut some styrofoam insulation boards to go uh, in this void space here. And before I do that, I'm going to take some silicone and I'm going to caulk uh, especially down the edges of where the OSB meets the wood. We want this to, thing to be airtight. So we're going to go ahead and caulk that and then we're going to cut some styrofoam boards to go inside of here to insulate that and then it'll get another layer of OSB over top of these 2x4s here. Alright, so uh, I'm going to get working on that and I'll be back with you in just a little bit. Alright guys, so we got our box caulked. Um, got after, uh, after I got off the camera last time I went in and caulked the box. Um, just wanted to talk a little bit about the caulk. It's, I'm using OSI, window door and siding caulk. And I use that on a daily basis for uh, my work. And um, you can buy it at any local hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, anything like that. They carry it. It's a great caulk for outdoor use. It's great for windows, doors, and siding, just like it says. And what makes it so awesome is that it's, it's a flexible caulk. It expands and contracts really well with the heat and with the cold. So I recommend that caulk for any of you DIYers that are replacing doors or windows or anything like that. So anyway, what I've done here is once I got it caulked, I went in and cut our styrofoam board to go in here. And by trying to use this stuff around the homestead, I had this board. It's one inch board. We actually have an inch and a half gap between, um, because the two by four thickness is an inch and a half. And so what we're going to need to do is build that out a little bit because we don't want any airspace in the back of our box. So what I've done is I had some scrap OSB, half inch OSB, and so this is one inch, this is half inch, and that brings us out flush with the front of the 2x4 so that we can lay our full sheet of OSB on here in just a little bit. But before we do that, we want to go ahead and cut our outlet and inlet holes so that uh, we can pull it back down and caulk and it'll be much easier to do it now than later. So I've got a 90 here that's going to 90 out of the side here for my inlet and then my outlet will go up there in that corner. And um, so we want to go ahead and cut the holes so that it can uh, we can pull it back off and caulk around it once we put it in. Now one thing you want to do when you're doing this is make sure that you don't hit a stud in your wall because that will throw everything off. So I know where my studs are pretty, pretty much. Um, when I nailed this, this top plate on here uh, when I was working on the siding, uh, I hit the studs on pretty much all of them. So we know that that's where the studs are. So, and my lag bolts are actually in the studs too. So I know I should have about 16 inches between them, but I want to be as close to this stud in this corner as I can be. So I'm going to get just up over the, the, o, the edge of the OSB there, come off that stud just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and cut our hole. All right, guys, so as you can see here, we've got our. <clears throat> Our, our final piece of OSB installed. <clears throat> so at this point we've got, just to kind of recap a little bit, um, we've got the OSB that's against the house and then we put our 2x4s in for bracing and then we put our 1 inch um, foam insulation panel in. Now you can buy that an inch and a half. I did an extra layer of OSB to help build that out to inch and a half so that it would be flush with those 2x4 braces we put in. But if you're buying the product, you can actually buy inch and a half foam board. So you could do that in uh, instead of two layers of OSB. But I had one inch, that's what I had, so we installed that. And then we put uh, some, we just pieced together some scrap OSB 
um, to fill in the void space so that there's no air pockets. And then I cut a piece of OSB that fits our actual opening. We dr drilled our holes. Um, this is going to be our inlet for the cold air to draw back in out of the room. And that's going to be our hot air output that goes that brings the warm air into the room. So we've got those installed. We got our holes drilled, and I went ahead and put the pipes in the 90s in. This is just four inch standard um, dryer duct work, and then we're going to use flex duct for our um, heating element. Okay. So, but I've got those installed, caulked around those, insulated around them really well. Uh, the only thing that I'm actually honestly worried about at this point is water getting down behind the siding. But as I said before. Uh, or between the siding and the back of the box. But as I said before, I'm going to make a piece of flashing that will drip edge over that and that will prevent that from ever happening. So right now we don't have that drip edge. The only thing I'm worried about is that moisture, that water getting down behind there. Luckily we don't get a lot of rain that blows against this side of the house. Uh, you can tell because um, when I where this siding sat for so long back here in the back before I put it up, it had dirt daubers and everything else living in it and there's still a lot of dirt on the siding. It's been up for over a month now. So we don't get a lot of blowing rain on this side. So thankfully, we don't have to worry too much about that. Um, but once we get that drip edge on there, it'll prevent that from ever happening. So right now, we're ready to start putting together the insides of our, of our box. Now, I'm gonna do something that I haven't seen anybody do before, but in my mind, physics, uh, you know, I want, in, in my physics mind, I want to keep this box as hot as possible for as long as possible. And that heat um, is going to transfer through that pipe, keep that pipe warm, and allow that hot air to come in. So even after the sun sets, or in a day where it's real sunny in the morning, and then it gets cloudy in the afternoon, I want this box to remain as hot as possible so that I can extract as much heat out of it as possible. So I started looking at ideas on how, what I could use inside of my box to absorb heat, the excess heat, uh, through the day and would release it for a little while. It's not going to stay hot all night, but would release some heat even after the sun goes down or when it gets real cloudy. What I came up with was to use asphalt shingles. I thought about bricks, I thought about rocks, I thought about all kinds of different stuff. What can I use that would absorb heat and hold the heat and then release it once the sun goes down? And um, like I said, I thought about all kinds of stuff. I looked at some physics tables to see what the best conductor of, of heat was. And I mean, just all kinds of stuff. I did a lot of research. And in my professional uh, experience, uh, asphalt roof is always hot. Even in the winter when the sun is shining, it can be cold out. You can see the heat coming off of an asphalt roof. Uh, asphalt absorbs heat. Uh, it's just It just naturally does that. Just like an asphalt road absorbs heat. You know, you can see that it's, it's hot. Um, the asphalt shingles, in theory, should do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is, before I put anything else in my box, I'm going to go ahead, I bought some black um, asphalt shingles, you, know, you get them at Lowe's or wherever, you might even have some laying around the house. Anything would work, any color would work, but black is what we're going for because we're trying to um, attract as much heat as possible and that black is going to do it. And we, we paint everything inside the box black anyway, so we want, uh, we're going to use black. Now shingles uh, come in bundles and a bundle is 33.3 uh, square feet. Um, and our box is about 25 square feet. Um, so one bundle should be enough to do it. It's about 20 bucks for a bundle of shingles. Now you can also, um, you know, get thicker shingles and, and higher quality shingles. But I think for what we're trying to do, this will work perfect. So I'm just going to lay these in here and nail them up just like you would if you was roofing a house. All right, guys, so it's day two of our uh, solar heater builder thingy thing. <laughs> anyway, um, so last night I ended up working into the dark a little bit, put my headlamp on. Uh, I didn't film uh, much just because it was so dark you wouldn't have been able to see anything anyway. I couldn't hardly see anything. So once uh, once I got the shingles in, you can see the shingles 
in the back here and I just laid those standard style you know how you normally lay shingles on a roof but if if you don't know how to if you want to use asphalt shingles and you don't know how to roof um, it's not that big a deal the, this you know we roof a certain way so that water won't leak in your house but this is watertight so we don't need to worry about that so I mean all we're all we're going for in the back here is just the absorption of the heat into the asphalt so I mean you could frankly you could just take those shingles and just lay them and just tack them up with uh, shingle nail roof, roofing nails is all I used and I mean they don't have to be patterned they don't have to be anything like that so if you don't know how to do it don't don't kick yourself it's it's not that big a deal just put them in there um, just have them in there to, to absorb that that heat um, but anyway so I got that done and then um, I ended up uh, using these plastic four inch pipe hangers and uh, that might be a mistake depending on how hot the box gets I don't know at what temperature these plastic hangers would melt uh, but at the very least they may become brittle in the high temperatures so that might have been a bad move on my part I didn't think about it till after I had already finished it last night so if it happens we'll address that later uh, but we're gonna roll with it for now um, <clears throat> so I just tied into my inlet back here, or my uh, inlet where the, the cold air would come in, tied into that, and I used 4 inch uh, flex duct, metal flex duct. Um, you can purchase it at any hardware store. I used four pieces of it. So that's 32 feet. Um, I pieced them together with a coupling kit and hose clamps, and then be sure you tape all of your seams with uh, HVAC tape and that'll that'll uh, prevent you from losing any air through your system so we got that ran I just kinda snaked it in I didn't really lay it out um, and you can see kinda the differences in the spacing or whatever I started uh, further apart down here when I should have started a little bit closer down here when I got to the top uh, I ran out of space and so these are kinda tight up in here and then you can see over here I was a little bit short of getting this to come all the way to the end, which will be okay. That allows more sun in on that asphalt right there, uh, and the spacing down here does it. Will do the same thing. Before I came out here, just for curiosity, I went inside where the the outlet is and put my hand up in front of it, and I could feel warm air coming out of it. And I don't even have it's it's not too cold out here today. It's probably um, uh, high forties, maybe low fifties right now so it's not super cold um, but anyway uh, I could feel a, a significant temperature change temperature difference when I placed my hand in front of that pipe I could feel the hot the warmer air and that's without any of the polycarbonate on there that's just with the black and on a cloudy day so I'm excited I think we're gonna have some good progress or some good results out of this um, but anyway like I said we've got all that done um, use the hangers, the ductwork, uh, coupling kits to tie it all together, HVAC tape, got it all tied in, strapped down, and painted everything black. And I painted it with a high temp paint. Um, I don't really think that that's necessary. I don't think it's going to get hot enough to cook the paint off of it. Um, but I went ahead and used a high temp uh, grill paint, flat black grill paint, and went back and touched up a little bit this morning. There's still some spots. It's really hard to get that paint to stick and to coat um, all the little crinkles and wrinkles in this flex duct. But I think for the most part, we're good to go. So the next step now is to install our polycarbonate. Now, um, I didn't pay attention when I bought this stuff, but this polycarbonate, it's good stuff. Um, make sure you get polycarbonate and not PVC. Um, the PVC will get brittle after uh, a couple weeks probably and uh, the polycarbonate will hold uh, tougher. It's actually made for greenhouses. Now the problem that we're going coming with here or running into is all these little pockets down here where it lays against the frame of my wood will create air gaps <clears throat> and we don't need any air gaps. We need it to be sealed. Well I bought these little foam starter edge thingies and you can see those don't line up at all they're not made for this style so what we're going to do is go ahead and caulk this lip here 
uh, I cut the edge off so that I had a flat lip to start on. I'm going to tack it on the side here and then I'm going to go back and cut these things and see if I can't get them to fit in there nice and tight. Just trim them down and uh, it'll be tedious because I've got to trim all of them down. But if I can do that, I can shove them up in there and then run a screw in and that'll pull it nice and tight. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. So uh, let's get working on the uh, putting our polycarbonate on so we can finish this job up. Alright guys, so I just finished uh, installing the polycarbonate on our box. And uh, I just wanted to go over a few things with you um, up close and kind of show you how I did what I did. And... Um, why I did it that way. So um, you can see I used the uh, the self tappers. These are actually made for metal roofing. They have the little rubber washer on them. That keeps moisture from uh, getting in and water from getting in um, underneath the screw where we drill the hole through the plastic. So use self tappers. Here's a uh, self tapper there. You really don't even need self tappers. The reason why I chose to use self tappers is because um, it's a little cool out and this polycarbonate is plastic it's like vinyl siding so if you was to just run a screw in it may crack it this will actually drill the hole through the plastic so that you don't crack the actual plastic so I recommend using self tappers and um, that'll that'll help you out there now as far as sealing up the uh, the baffles um, where the ribs are what I did was I took the strips of the uh, the rubber um, that I showed you earlier and I just cut this tip off of it and uh, they leave these little holes in there um, so that air can breathe through and uh, that's typically what you want in your roof but in our case we don't want that so what I did was I ran a bead of caulk black caulk silicone now you want to use silicone all the way down through there now I laid my panel on and I would one at a time after I cut all these off I'd put it up in there and then put a screw in and then put another uh, spacer in then put a screw in and pull it down nice and tight and then when that excess caulk dripped out from underneath there I just went back and pushed it up into those holes to seal those off so that should alleviate the chance for uh, or reduce the chance for um, for air to get in there um, and that's what we want so and then you can see behind each thing there's caulk that's what all that mushed around there is so that should seal it up pretty nicely um, and then of course up the edges I cut the uh, the flange off so that I would have a flat piece uh, or cut the baffle off so that I'd have a flat piece on the start here and that gives me a nice screw strip all the way up through there and of course I caulked all the way up through there as well um, where the two joined, there's, you've kind of got two options. Um, you can cut you a strip of like two by two or something like that and put it inside your box. And then where these overlap, you can run some screws in there, those self tappers, and just screw it in nice and tight. I didn't want to put more timber in there than what I needed. So what I did was I just caulked, I put a bead of caulk underneath and uh, it doesn't look pretty because it's black caulk but I didn't have any clear and I didn't want to go back to Lowe's again. So I just used the same black caulk that I was using for everything else and uh, then I went back and drilled some holes and put some rivets all the way up through there on about uh, three or four inch centers. Um, so that pulls that in and makes a good seal there and I uh, did the same thing there where the two, uh, two joined. Um, and then the same thing here where this last little piece joined in here. Um, so that should hold us pretty tight, especially when that caulk sets up. That should make a pretty good seal for us. Um, and then the same thing over here, it worked out to where it perfectly, I had a, uh, a, a baffle here and I cut it off and it left me a perfect little strip there. Um, so anyway, it took uh, three full size pieces and then a little short piece. So overall I bought two eight foot sections of polycarbonate and I ended up using um, well pretty much the full two. I've got some scraps left but for the most part it took two full eight foot sheets. Um, so anyway I am it's done it's all closed up now. The only thing that's left to do is just I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and I was talking about making a rain a drip edge for the top I may go ahead and bend me some flashing to go around just some 90 
to go around the corners here and um, it'll just attach to the wood and that'll dress that up and, and hide all the screw holes and it'll make it look a lot more attractive and because right now I mean you can see right now it just looks like a box on the side of my house which it, it's always going to look like that but it'll dress it up and make it look prettier um, if we wrap it in some in some uh, aluminum trim so overall I don't think it looks too bad it definitely will draw questions um, but uh, you know it's not too tacky looking I don't guess um, for what it is for a homemade uh, solar heat absorber um, I think it it turned out pretty good uh, anyway so that's it uh, I haven't been inside yet to test the uh, the heat output uh, coming out of it just because it's so cloudy today but I'm curious to find out this is kind of an experiment like I said in the beginning of the video um, I don't really know what our uh, outcome is going to be um, other than based on the research that I've done and the other people that have made them um, you know I'm, I'm curious I'm, I'm curious to see how well it works um, so anyway I guess that will come to find out later once we uh, get the room insulated and we have some sunny days another thing I read a lot of comments where people were um, people were curious like well what are you gonna do um, you know on a cloudy day or on a uh, you know when it's not the sun's not shining like today like how what kind of uh, and then at night too when it's dark what kind of results are you gonna have on cloudy days and I would assume just based off of some uh, scientific reasoning I would I would assume that even on cloudy days you should have some heat output that comes out of your uh, out of your box and the reason why I say that is the same reason that solar panels work even on cloudy days um, do they put out the uh, the maximum wattage no they're not they're not going to obviously because the the uh, photo cells aren't reacting to uh, a lot of sunlight so I would think that it would be the same way in this case it's solar heat solar energy um, and so even on a cloudy day I would assume that that box would heat up just maybe not as much as on a sunny day um, so I, I think it'll work on cloudy days just not as well and uh, then also at night obviously it's not going to you know there's not going to be any energy there just like in solar panels but that's the reason for putting the asphalt shingles in my box is to get a little bit of heat out of it even after it gets dark so of course it's not going to pull it through the night but hopefully those asphalt shingles will absorb some of that heat and even after the sun goes down maybe for an hour or so we'll still get some uh, residual heat out of the box that's left in there um, now also one more thing to talk about is you see a lot of these people if you're researching it you'll see a lot of people that put fans in their boxes uh, or in the input uh, where the exhaust air uh, or where the cool air comes in they'll put a fan like a little 12 volt solar fan or a computer fan or something to help circulate the air now scientifically that shouldn't be necessary uh, there's the chimney effect which means that hot air always rises and so the warm air the cool air coming in should force the warm air out and also so you should have a draw also there's the uh, thermal expansion that's happening and thermal expansion is when uh, the mo when molecules heat up they expand and they force themselves out of a hole uh, or out of a an, an, whichever way the path of least resistance so via thermal expansion and the chimney effect that should force the cold air or the warm air out of the top and create a natural draw that sucks the cool air in now we'll see if that works um, there's a lot of things that come into play when you're talking about the chimney effect for instance in a chimney in order to get a proper draw you have to have uh, clearance from your roof so that the wind can hit it just right or the air can hit it just right and draw naturally draft or draw that smoke out of the chimney like it's supposed to so we'll see if it works who knows if it's going to work um, and two we only have 
about uh, probably 30 inches from the bottom to the top. So I would think that any draw should work or any height should work, but we'll uh, just have to wait and see. So anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Um, we will see how it performs, and um, I'll do a follow-up video maybe in a couple of weeks um, and see how it's performing. And uh, maybe once we get the trim on it and all that good stuff, we'll, uh, we'll do a follow-up video. Uh, but anyway, that should be it for this one. Until next time, guys, uh, if you have any comments or questions or concerns or, you know, anything like that, leave me a comment. And I really do try to answer comments. I just can't. I get probably two to three hundred comments a day on just all the videos that I have posted. And I can't always get to all of them. So um, I do try to answer as many as I can. Um, just, you know, with time restrictions and things like that, I just don't always get, get a chance to um, answer all of them. So, but leave your comments and questions. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know your um, uh, if you've done this before and, and your results in, uh, in what you came up with. And, uh, yeah, so anyway, until next time, guys, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later. Thank <laughs> you.